What's up, y'all? Today, I'm coming to you with an article to talk about the stereotypical um, label that people put on black women about being naturally promiscuous. So we're going to get into this and why it's a big ass problem for a bunch of males to sit online who happen to share the same genetics as us and constantly say that we're ran through, we're three old foes, we're promiscuous, and that they're pushing this narrative in front of the world that black women are naturally promiscuous and we can't keep our legs closed and we're nothing but a bunch of baby mamas who's good for nothing but to have kids with and leave or a pump and dump is what they call it. The way they refer to us is absolutely disgusting and I'm going to tell you where it's all rooted from. And by the end of this video, you will see how they basically just hate themselves. And then they wind up lashing out at us. So I do want to put it out there that this video is for educational purposes of the history of how black women and girls have always been hypersexualized and considered as fast or promiscuous. So let's get into it. So I want to share this article with you that says the historical roots of the sexualization of black women and girls. Last week, we explored how the way that our society views black girls as more mature and less innocent than their white peers while, um, may allow predators such as R. Kelly to exploit them. Research has shown that black girls are viewed through a hypersexual lens and as a result are less likely to be believed when they report S.A. This begs the question, where does this exactly come from and how can we combat it? Like many issues involving race in our country, the view of black women and girls as hypersexual has its roots in racism. Understanding how our culture became to believe that black women and girls were more sexually advanced can help us eradicate this harmful way of thinking and to protect all women and girls from sexual violence. So this is before the slave trade took hold in Africa, European travelers um, were going to Africa fascinated and appalled by the dress and practices of Africans that they encountered there. The minimum amounts of clothing that were worn by women um, and the seemingly lewd dances and the fact that the tribes was promote uh, practice in polygamy, they automatically thought that the black women were more um, promiscuous than what they were used to seeing. And for those of you who do not know, twerking originated in Africa. So the form of dance that they do at their rituals is uh, similar to twerking. So it said this, the tribal dances led the Europeans to believe that Africans were sexually lewd. He said African women were hot constitution ladies who are continually contriving strateg stratagems how to gain a lover. The initial stereotype of black women as sexually promiscuous arose from these writings. So it all stemmed from some Europe. European guy traveled to Africa, seen a different culture and automatically labeled us a bunch of H words. OK, and now black men are on social media doing the exact same thing. It states the idea that black women had insatiable appetites for sex was used to justify the R and enslaved women by their owners. For owners, this practice had the added effect of producing additional enslaved people. Under the laws of the time, any child born to an enslaved person would also be enslaved. As a result, an owner would be able to increase his personal wealth through committing horrific crimes. Excuse me, but because enslaved people were considered property, enslaved women could not legally be art under the law at this time. In contrast, enslaved men who engaged in relationships with white women, whether consensually or forcibly, would be put to death. And I truly believe that it's why they are so fascinated with white women to this day is because they've always been seen as forbidden fruit for black men. So it's kind of like a gotcha moment for them as to why they constantly feel the need to always seek women outside of their race. It's kind of like to get back at the man. That's literally the only way they can get back at the man is by dating their women versus learning how to empower themselves and um, build their communities and have ownership. They don't own shit and they don't have any type of power. So the only power they have is in their penises and how they can put them in um, envelopians, okay? 
Black women and girls did not end. All right. The crime of art was common, yet from the end of the Civil War into the 1960s, no Southern WM was convicted of R or attempted R of a BW or girl. If assaulted by a BM, many B black women and girls did not report the crime to authorities for fear that the assailant would be put to death. So this stuff goes all the way back to the time of the 1960s where we were being abused by BMs and we didn't report it as women because we were afraid that the, the, the man would beat them to death or something would happen to them. So this started in our families of us protecting these abusive men. Okay, so this is not new. So when you hear them saying, oh, well, y'all been abusing us. Y'all been bullying and abusing us for the last 40 years. That's not what this fucking article says. It says the exact opposite, as a matter of fact. It says the portrayal of black women and girls as sexually promiscuous Jezebels continued throughout the 20th century and it promoted and it and is prominent to this day. Memorabilia from the 1900s often show black women and girls as highly sexualized with large breasts and buttocks. They may be pregnant, have multiple children, or simply be shown depicting pregnant black children or young black children with breasts covering their genitals with a paper fan. In movies and pop culture, black women were generally depicted as highly sexualized fallen women when they weren't being shown as mammies. Okay, so it was either one or the other, the, the overweight black woman or the slender Jezebel. The point being made was clear and subtle. In American society, black women and girls were viewed as promiscuous and sexually deviant, even from a young age. With a history like this, is it any wonder that our culture currently views black girls this way, including, again, our own Men are sitting online constantly berating us and telling the fucking world that we can't keep our legs closed as if A, they not the ones prying them open and B, they're literally regurgitating racial stereotypes about black women. But then when I make videos about them, they call me a fucking supremacist. And it's like the fucking irony. Stop lying on us and stop helping to spread this fucking stereotype. Y'all need to speak for the own coochies that y'all been dealing with. Because this shit don't apply to me. I'm not no fucking 304, nor am I ran through. So I do not take this subject lightly because I know where it stems from. And as a woman, I don't fuck everybody. Says it is tempting in 2019 to talk about racism as though it was a thing of the past. It is not. Racism seeps into the subconscious of a variety of ways. And then it also says enslaved women and girls were frequently pregnant. This was encouraged as a way to increase the number of enslaved people on a plantation and often rewarded. When an enslaved woman or girl became pregnant, it was often used as proof that she had an insatiable sexual appetite. Kind of like how they berate single black mothers on this internet. And then it says, at the same time, enslaved people were regularly put on the auction blocks in naked or nearly naked states. This display of black women stood in a stark contrast to white women who were clothed nearly head to toe. It reinforced the idea that white women were modest and pure while black women were immodest and sexually lewd. So I say all of this to say that it is extremely like, I don't even know what to call it at this point of the fact that they insist on like trying to embarrass us, trying to berate us. They spend all this time online trying to berate black women and dig up stats on us to try to embarrass us and make us look like incompetent sluts. But they can't even do something as simple as trademark the name Passport Bros. They let a white guy come along and do it. So I'm putting this information out here for people who are interested in being educated on why it's so disturbing for a bunch of black men to constantly sit online calling black women sluts. It's disgusting and every black man and woman should be upset about this. Okay, so I will see you guys on the next one. Let me know what you think down below in the comments.